Hello my viewers, welcome to another Hexmaniac Advanced tutorial. This tutorial is basic number 3, Moves Editing. In this video, I'll introduce you to the Moves table, I'll show you how to edit the moves, I'll show you how to expand the moves so you can get more of them in the game, I will show you how to add move effects, and I'll show you how to implement simple move animations. Without further ado, let's get into the tutorial. If you haven't already, check out the GitHub page for Hexmanic Advance. I will show you the URL on screen. This website provides a brief overview about what Hexmanic Advance is capable of and what developers and ROM hackers can do to get started. The main thing of note is the releases page on the right hand side of the website. Out of all the versions you will see on this page, the top one is the latest version of Hexmanic Advance that is released to the public. Make sure you use the newest version of Hexmanic Advance so that you will have access to all of the latest features and you'll have minimal bugs. Download the version that matches what operating system you have. And you'll also need an application called .NET 6 Desktop Runtime. My personal recommendation is to join our Discord and if you go to the hashtag releases channel, you will see even newer versions than what are available on GitHub. Please note that these are debug versions and they aren't as stable as the versions on GitHub, but you'll have access to some of the newer features, and Haven releases these debug versions at a faster rate than normal. So now, if we want to edit a move, we first need to know where all the moves are stored in the ROM. Um, it's in one giant table, and Hexmaniac Advance knows how to format it so that all of the data is easier to edit with your fingertips. So, if you go to the Go To menu, you will see this Moves button. You can click it, and it will take you to the Moves table automatically. Note the name of the Moves table right here. Okay, now we're in the Move table for uh, Base Emerald. And it's basically kind of like a spreadsheet. You have on the rows you have like each individual move in the game, and on the columns you have like various attributes like the move effect, base power type, accuracy, etc. By default, there are over 350 moves in the game, so scrolling to find the move that you want is not the most efficient method. What you can do is open the Go To menu, type in the move that you know that you want to edit, then you click the Data button and click Pokemon.moves.stats or pokemon.moves.names slash whatever the name of the move is. While both options will take you to different places in the ROM, you will be able to see all of the move data on the left panel. If you have the moves table loaded on the hex content panel of Hexmanic Advance, then there are two places where you can edit the moves table. You can edit directly on the quote unquote spreadsheet, like what I'm doing right now by editing the type, the PP, or the priority. Alternatively, I can go to the table tool, which is to the left of the hex content panel, and edit the move attributes that way. Now one note is that if you want to edit the name of the move, you have to do it here. So for example, double team, you want to change it to something else. Um, it automatically took you to a different table of the move names. Now you can edit the move in here to say triple team. You can edit in the hex content viewer. Or you can edit in the tools, in the table tool, single team. Now, move names are capped at 12 characters, 13 if you count the Terminator FF byte, and bypassing this limit is pretty complicated. It can be done, but it's beyond the scope of this tutorial. Now, if you want to edit the description, the description is a pointer, which is basically just four bytes that take you to a different area in the ROM. Um, by clicking on this, it takes you to this table of move description pointers, and you can edit it directly in the table tool as well. Um, if it turns out that Hexmanic Advance will run out of space to continue editing the move description on your command, the text will automatically move itself to free space, and you can continue on from there. You'll also notice that the pointer to the text has changed to a different address. Another attribute you can modify is the move's effect. Right now I'll show you how to replace one move's effect with an existing effect that's used by a different move in the game. Here I scroll up through the list and I find the move effect that raises the attack stat by one stage. If you want the move to have a particular effect and you don't know the effect's name by heart, what you can do is take the move effect from another move. 
What you can do is pull up the go to menu, type the move that has the move effect you want, for instance, Swords Dance. Copy the actual byte that corresponds to the move's effect, which is in this case Raise Attack 2 Primary, and go back to where you were earlier. Click on the byte that corresponds to the old move effect and hit Paste. Now let's put it all together. All this time I was editing a status move, now I think it's time to edit an attacking move. Say we want to implement the 5th generation move Scald. In this case, I'll replace Hydro Pump with Scald. First I click on Hydro Pump's name and I adjust it. Then I adjust the description to match what Scald actually does in the vanilla games. Afterwards I change the effect field so that it matches Embers, which is Burn Hit Chance. Then I decrease the power and increase the accuracy so that it matches the stats for the move Scald. I raise the PP and I change the effect accuracy to 30%. Lastly, I changed Scald's animation pointer to match the move animation that I have in my Emerald hack, and I will mention move animations later on. I open the ROM in MGBA and I'm going to show you Hydro Pump in action. The animation looks like Base Emerald's Hydro Pump, but I added will -O -Wisp's Flames at the end. Here are Scald's stats in-game. They pretty much match what we edited in Hex Manic Advance. Now, before I continue, I need to remind you that it's vital to back up your ROM every now and then. Make lots of them, just in case anything goes wrong. You could get carried away after making a major change to your ROM. Something going on could cost you several hours of progress. Luckily, the way HMA handles backups is pretty simple. What you do is click File and then Export Backup. You'll be given a prompt about your most recent change to your ROM. Answer it and a backup of your GBA and TomL file will be ready for you. There are also backup numbers so you don't have to worry about your changes not being in alphabetical order. Backups of your ROM hack via Hexmaniac Advance are stored in a folder called Backups. That folder is in the same directory as your original ROM hack. Now, say we wanted to add a ton of moves from later generations into the game. We could continue getting rid of old moves, like Aerial Ace in this case, to make room for Air Slash by changing all of the battle data, name, and description. But there comes a point that we can't really do that reliably for every single move that we want to implement. So what we could do is literally expand the number of moves that you can pick from in the game. One may think to go to the end of the moves table where Psycho Boost is, and hover over the Add One New button, but if you just do that and nothing else, there will be problems when you try to actually use those moves. If you look at the hover menu, it says that not all tables can be expanded without negative side effects, such as the items, the amount of types, the trainers, the Pokemon, and especially the moves. When Game Freak made those games, they also put hard-coded limiters into the data of those tables, for whatever reason. As a Hexmanic Advanced user, you are responsible for knowing which tables can or cannot be expanded safely with the Add One New button. In other words, you need to keep track of the limiters in the game. If you hang around in our Discord, you'll eventually hear about them. If you don't believe me, keep watching as I expand the Moves table and add Bug Buzz's move data. In a couple of moments, you will see me try to use Bug Buzz in a Pokemon Fire Red game. In this battle, you'll see Charmander using Bug Buzz on Squirtle. Wait, Charmander used a bug move? Why didn't it show its name? That is one of the side effects of expanding the move effects without using the move expansion utility. If you go up to the top of your window, you'll see the utilities button. Click it, hover over expand, and click make moves expandable. This thing does quite a lot of things to your ROM once you run this utility. Upon clicking Make Moves Expandable in your instance of Hexmanic Advance, you can click click here to learn more to, s to see exactly what it does to your ROM. Also, this is a lengthy process because a lot of changes happen to your ROM almost at once, so you have to bear with Hexmanic Advance for a bit. Now that I'm back in the emulator, I'm going to show a wild Pokemon using Bug Buzz. Now that we've added the move expansion utility, the name shows up correctly and now it's a 100% valid move to use in the game. If you impulsively clicked Add One New to the Moves table without reading the warning, as long as you use the Expand Moves utility, afterwards there will be no harm, no foul. 
I did the same thing in Emerald, and here's what the move table looks like after running the routine. Most of the data got shifted one column to the right. So for example, the PP column is where the effect accuracy column used to be. And there's one fewer column of unused data. This is because, take a look at the effect column. The size has doubled, and this is so that the number of move effects in the game can jump into the thousands. The next thing on the list is adding new move effects. Earlier in the video, I introduced you to the moves table. Now I'm going to introduce you to the move effects table, which is scripts.moves.effects. What you'll see is a table to pointers, and each pointer points to a piece of code that corresponds with each move effect. For instance, you'll see taunts battle script on the left panel. Battle scripting is really complicated, and that would have to be in its own tutorial. There are a lot of commands to be familiar with and a lot of locations in RAM that a bunch of battle data is stored in. You could edit existing move effects such as adding the move effect for Hurricane using Thunder's slot and adding a bit of code to make it confuse the opponent instead of paralyzing, but even then that's pretty complicated considering you'd have to know a lot of like constants and other intricacies in Pokemon Emerald's battle mechanics. Instead, in this tutorial, I'll be adding the move effects for Hex and Coil, two Generation 5 moves. The first thing I'm going to do is expand the move effects table so that I'll have a total of 216 effects to pick from. Do note that you cannot change the names of the move effects in Hex Maniac Advance without going to your Tom L file. The table gets repointed when there's no space to put the new pointers in. Replace the duplicate pointers for Camouflage's battle script with pointers to free space. Here I'll be using a script for Hex that someone published on Poke Community. Be sure to give them credit if you're using their script. And the same goes for any tutorial or resource you find online. Basically you just replicate the code that you see here, although you are going to have to make multiple adjustments because this Poke Community code was made for a different application that edits battle scripts. For instance, I replaced at double damage with just a regular pointer in free space. And I had to find the RAM address for the set byte command instead of just saying damage multiplier. Perhaps I could explain in a lot of detail in a future tutorial about battle scripting, but that would have to be for another time. If you need help with implementing a battle script, you can always ask us at the Poke Community Discord, Android server, or the Hexmanic Advanced Discord. Now I'm just quickly expanding the moves table to account for these new move effects. I am adding the moves hex and coil, and I'm also adjusting their battle data as appropriate. I still haven't implemented the move effect for coil, and I will do it right now. By clicking on the right arrowhead that's next to unnamed 215, which is the move effect, I can go to the actual part of the table that has the pointer to the battle script and follow the pointer. Now what I did was I took Coil's move effect from my own ROM hack, which was based off of Quiver Dance's move effect, and that move effect was something I took from Poke Community and credited. I don't advise taking code from other ROM hacks, but if you credited the original developer for one feature and you want to implement another feature that's really similar, like for example Quiver Dance and Coil, if you're able to notice like particular patterns, or if the features are so similar you can change a couple of numbers, then you're basically implementing the same feature that you're already crediting twice. Coil and Quiver Dance both raise three stats, but the stats they raise are different. Some guesswork and assumptions are required to, if you don't know a lot about battle scripting to achieve the desired effects based on other moves move effects. Oh, oops, my bad. I forgot a couple of things. I'll be right back. Alright, I fixed the battle script and now the move works as intended. Always remember to playtest your new features to make sure they work 100% of the time. The move animation worked when I added lines of code to the right panel that were missing from the left panel. I also forgot to make coil target the user. Now we're going to be talking about move animation editing, but only for a little while because, just like battle scripting, move animation editing is quite a challenge. Alright, I'm going to add a new move, but for the sake of time I'll just replace an existing move, teleport. I'm going to add Zen Headbutt and I'll try to show you editing Zen Headbutt's animation. 
Now first what I'm going to do is go to this graphics.pokemon.moves.animations pointer here and I'm going to just pick an area in free space. Now before making a move animation you need to ask yourself what you want to do exactly. Some move animations can be really hard to create while sometimes you can just get away with using an existing move animation but making minor tweaks. What I will do here is combine the move effects of tail glow and regular headbutt. But you can definitely make more advanced animations than that, but I will not cover that in this tutorial. First I will go to Tail Glow's move animation. So graphics, and it says it right here. You may have to do some more digging around if your name shares another subdirectory in Hexmanic Advance. So you have this animation pointer here. Follow it. Now select all of the animation code. Copy it, go back to the area in free space that you have for Zen Headbutt in this case, paste the code. Now find Headbutt's code. So it would be the same process by using the go to menu to find Headbutt, copying the animation code, and pasting it. Just add it onto the existing animation code that you already have. Some things to note about move animation editing is that, that you can only load 5 graphics at a time with the load sprite gfx command. If you use 6 or more of them, then your move animation will cause graphical glitches in double battles. And the other thing of note is if you have commands that are after an end command, the game will ignore those commands after end and stop the move animation. Thus, if you're pasting one animation code onto another, you will want to remove the original move's end so that you can continue playing the animation. If you want, you can make more adjustments to the code to polish up the move animation, but for demonstration purposes, I'll stop here. Now I'll demonstrate this move animation in a wild Pokemon battle. And it seems like the move animation was a success. If you want to learn more about making your own move animations, I can potentially make a video, or you could look at a Poke Community tutorial. Unfortunately, the tutorial is only for Fire Red, but a lot of the things are the same as in Ruby and Emerald. But the pointers are different, and you'll have to fish for them on your own. Alright folks, this is all I got for you today. You learned a lot about the basics of editing moves, such as move animations, battle scripting, editing existing moves, and adding new moves to the game. Hopefully this will kickstart a lot of your ROM hacks when you're adding a load of new moves to the game. Not to mention the other tutorials that you'll likely look at by other users such as editing text, Pokemon, or trainers. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, join the Hexmanic Advance Discord, and get the latest version of Hexmanic Advance if you haven't already. If Hexmanic Advance ever crashes or you find a bug or a debug assert, please be sure to submit a bug report on Discord or on GitHub and the developer will try to fix it as soon as he can. Thank you all for watching and I hope to see you soon. Take care!